Hello guys, welcome back to Irish Funny Vlogs and today I'm ranking the top 10 managers from 10 to 1 in the first division. Now this one's a bit more difficult because an awful lot of managers are only in the job a year or less, believe it or not. So, um, but the main purpose of it is, as well as is an excuse to actually talk about some of the, the clubs in the first division and some of the managers in the first division. So let's get cracking. Now, number 10, I've put in Adrian Carberry, the manager of Athlone Town. Now, Adrian was appointed at the start of the season. He's a local man, and I think this is what Athlone are looking for as well. Someone who knows the area and can entice the local businesses in. I think that's a big thing. They need to get local businesses back to Athlone and support the club, etc., etc. So it's a bit of a long-term project, this. Start of the season, no points in the first couple of games, but um, I do see this as a long-term project for Adrian. He's a man that has a lot of knowledge of the club. He realised the potential of the club. They have a nice little stadium in Athlone as well. That has to be considered too. So um, at the moment, he's in at 10, but uh, as I say, starting a project for Athlone Town. Now, number nine of Aiden Price of Shamrock Rovers. Aiden Price is 38 years of age. He played for Shamrock Rovers between 2006-2010, played 119 games, won a league title. He also won a league title with St. Patrick's Leg in 2013. And he was actually player of the year in 2006 for Shamrock Rovers as well. So uh, in terms of the Shamrock Rovers B situation, he, he obviously knows the club quite, quite well. Uh, working with a lot of young players there, of course, as well. And um, the difficulty from his point of view is the fact that you know, sometimes young players will be available to him and sometimes they'll be available to the first team. So, whereas whereas he has a job to do at Rovers B, obviously, it's from their point of view, it's, you know, used as a stepping stone for the first team rather than trying to build a club, let's say. But at the same time, he has a job to do and um, we have him in at number nine. Now, at number eight is another brand new manager this season. That's Andy Myler, UCD. Now, Andy Myler was doing a lot of work in the background at UCD. He has a history of working with young players as he managed the under-20s at Shamrock Rovers before. So that was obviously in their thinking uh, when they appointed him. I think it's very important for UCD to bring in managers who know how the setup works, particularly at UCD, I believe. Um, as I said, he was on the backroom team at UCD, etc., etc., He's had a rough start, I guess, three, three points from two games. When I say rough start, they got a bit of a rude awakening when they were beating 5-1 at Drotted at United Park. Um, Andy Miner comes with bags of experience as a player as well, scoring a serious amount of goals throughout his career. 353 games, 133 goals. Um, he did play for UCD as well. He started his career there where he played 48 games and scored 13 goals in the early 90s he managed to go on and play for Monaghan, Athlone, Drogheda and Shamrock Rovers scored an awful lot of goals a uh, big hero at Lone Town in particular but um, someone that um, is obviously the start of his project as well and has come in and um, is used to working with young players so it'll be interested to see how he progresses UCD but at the moment he's number eight on my list. Now number seven is Brian O'Sullivan of Wexford FC uh, Brian took charge and started the 2019 season. Uh, the water for man, he actually came in with, with a few games gone in the league. Difficult, difficult job, difficult situation for Waterford. Finished 2019 with 10 points and only two wins. Um, you know, coming into 2020 though, definitely improvements to the squad. Connor English and Dan Tobin coming in, very good signings. Three points. From or two points from the opening three games, one all draw at UCD, a two nil defeat at Bray, and a nil nil draw with Galway. But it's proved that they were already way more competitive than they were last season, and um, you know he's put a squad together that looks like it can develop and improve. Another manager likes working with young younger players and and building a squad as well. So. Um, it's been a difficult start for him, there's no doubt about that, but I see improvements in pre-season and I see improvements in the signings they've made. So uh, 
And because he's been at the at the club longer than the newer managers, I guess, I'll put him in at number seven. That's Brian O'Sullivan. Now, number six, I have Alan Murphy of Galway United or Galway FC, whatever way you want to put it. Now, Alan's the leading uh, goal scorer of all time for Galway, scoring 75 goals for the club. So he's obviously a bit of a hero. He's a young manager. He's only 26. Um, he took over in July 2018. They finished sixth with 41 points. Um, but he took over halfway through the season. It has to be said, last season, 2019, was a big disappointment for Galway, though. <gasps> Excuse me. They finished seventh in the league and 26 points off uh, Cabin Teeley in the playoffs. So, um, well, actually, 27 points off Cabin Teeley in the playoffs. But 26-27 uh, doesn't really matter from that point of view. But... Um, Look, that's probably not seen to be good enough for, from a Galway, if you're a Galway fan. Uh, Alan is a young manager. He is a bit of a hero of Galway. He knows a lot of work to do at the club. 2020, two draws. Uh, a funny start because he had a game called off. Um, and one of those draws against Rovers B should have been called off, if I'm honest, as well. But two draws, steady start. Uh, Shane Duggan, a bit of a key signing coming into the season. He was a massive coup. To get him in. So it was going to be interesting to see Galway this season. I've no doubt they were they were going to improve on last season. Uh, possibly get a playoff place. Who knows. But um, I think the pressure's on Murphy a little bit to do that. Because if he didn't, I think there might be question marks. But uh, this minute of time, Murphy's in at number six. Now, number five of Gary Cronin and Bray Wanderers. Now, Gary was appointed at an awkward time for the... Seagulls in 2018 in August when they looked like they were going down. They did go down. They finished bottom of the table in the Premier Division with 18 points. 2019, they finished fifth, seven points off the playoffs. A little bit disappointing, I think, from a Bray Wanderers point of view. But um, Gary, again, a very young manager. He did play for the club as well. So, again, someone who understands the club. He spent three years at Bray. 2006, 2009, and I do think that's important. The one thing you notice in this list is that an awful lot of managers are more or less at the beginning or very close to the beginning of projects, and it's very hard to rank them. But 2020, I think they'd be looking to make progress and certainly get into the playoffs. It's a big year for Gary Cronin in that sense. Uh, Gary Shaw was a good signing and had started the season quite well. They, they Three points from two games as well, a bad defeat in Cabin Teeley. But then a good win at home. So Bray, I would expect to be getting into playoffs. But a bit like Murphy, Cronin. Um, you know, if Bray don't get into the playoffs, I guess questions might be asked there. But, um, you know, Cronin at this minute in time, one of the longest serving managers in the league probably as well. Uh, which is an interesting one. But he gets in at number five. Then number four, I've got Stuart Ashton in a Cove Ramblers. Stuart took over on an interim basis from... Dave Henderson, who did a very good job, in fairness, at the club. He stepped down in June 2019. Uh, Ashton did take over on an interim basis. He was assistant, um, but then he was uh, given a two-year deal a few months later. Cove Rammers finished sixth in the league. Um, it was a good season for them. Ashton is responsible for half of that, you would say, to be fair, and the fact that he was assistant to Dave Henderson as well. Um, known as a coach, particularly a lot of the work he's done in Cork with Cork City um, and bringing through young players. And that'll suit because uh, Cove Ramblers have a lot of young players, Phillips, uh, Hurley and players like that coming through their ranks. And I think it will suit um, Ashton. Looking forward to seeing how he gets on this season. Uh, one win that's so far this season, beating Athlone 3 2. And. Put in good shifts elsewhere, particularly the home game against a good draw on the side. So for me, Ashton deserves to be number four on the list. And as a manager, worth following, to be honest now. And number three, I've gone for Dara Doyle of Longford Town. Neil Fenn was the manager of Longford Town for a lot of last season, to be fair. But he left the club in August to take up the reins of Cork City, as we all know. Doyle, who was his assistant as well since 2017, um, took the job. Uh, in the end, Longford finished third in the league, level on points with Drotter the United Mind, and lost in the playoff semi final, which they would have been disappointed, I think. They lost some penalties, they didn't lose a match, they drew their two games against Cabin Teeley. So um, that's disappointing. But um, 
look, Dara's done a good job. He's steadied the ship a bit at Longford as well. And looks strong at the start of the season. You know, winning their first two games, including a great win at United Park and Strata the United. Um, Rob Manley, big, big signing as well. A key, key signing. And we'll add to their attacking prowess, I believe. So, Dara, I think, again, a young manager, the potential to really improve things at Longford and bring them forward and um, have them a serious title contenders this season, never mind going up via playoffs or anything like that. So, uh, Dara Doyle, for me, is at number three at this minute in time. Now, number two, I've gone for Tim Clancy, draw the United. Tim is the youngest manager in the league at 35 years of age. This will be his third season in control at United Park. Um, they'll be sick of Finn Harps two seasons in a row in 2018 they were beating the semi-final over two legs against Finn Harps promotion playoff semi-final and 2019 they were beaten again this time the final uh, against Finn Harps as well losing 2-0 after extra time up at Finn Park having won the first leg at home 1-0 so they'll be sick and tired of Finn Harps and they'll be hoping to avoid them again the best way to avoid them is to win the league Drotten are one of the favourites to win the league. There's no doubt about that. And Clancy's really, I think, developed them over the last two seasons. Uh, I thought they were better last season than they were the season before. And I think he's put together a squad that is going to have them better this season also. Um, you know, good strike force, as we all know, with the players they have. Lines, Doyle, etc. Adi Amo coming through and um, improve the back line with the likes of Douglas and Jack Touche, etc. coming in. Uh, Prendergast, of course, too. So, um, yeah, for me, Tim Clancy, manager to watch in general, big time, over the next few seasons. But working his magic a little bit at Drotada and really getting the motor and, and uh, as I say, won the title favourites. And he just comes in at number two on my list. Now, number one on the list, we went from the youngest manager of the league now to the oldest manager of the league, the most experienced manager of the league. Pat Devlin is 67 years of age. Now, Cabin Teeley, we know, are a new club. They Their first uh, season in the league was in 2015. Eddie Gormley was their manager. But Dolan, I was going to say. Not Pat Dolan. Pat Devlin came in in 2016 and took up the reins. But also an important um, side thing to this is the fact that he is also director of football at Cabin Teeley. Now that was a great move by Cabin Teeley to get someone of his experience to do both um, because he really has helped progress the club off the field. He's I know they've a massive youth undertaking there and some very good youth teams and really work off that and um which means they're financially okay as well. Uh, but Pat as well has a tendency to bring in young players that maybe were struggling, i.e. Rob Manley, and turn them into the top scorer in the first division, for example. Um, so it's everything he's done. He's obviously improved Cavan Teeley in the last few years, got them to the playoffs last season where they did lose in the final, or the semi-final, or the fi semi-final, sorry, rather, to Drotada, and they did lose 5-1 and won the legs, but you have to remember this is a new club coming up against established clubs like your Drotadas, uh, and they've finished out the likes of Galway and Bray and, and teams like that. They've really developed over the last few, few years as a club, and I put an awful lot that down to Pat Devlin. His experience, as I said, his managerial skills and his skills as a director of football all coming into one, really, to be honest. Um... And they're top of the league so far this season as well after three games. Even though they lost players like Manly and Touche, etc. Um, Devlin has a habit of unearthing new players. So, um, yeah, look, I can't say enough about Pat Devlin. Great manager, great guy. Um, an ambassador almost for the for the leagues of Ireland as well. You can go back to his Bray days, etc. But we're talking about Cabin Teeley and Devlin here. For me, he has to be number one this list. So that's about it, guys. I enjoyed this. Uh, overall, difficult because a lot of managers are new, but it was a good excuse to talk about the first division because I like to uh, incorporate the first division as well and talk about some of the clubs and the managers at the first division clubs um, because Irish Footy Vlogs is not just the Premier Division. It's the first division as well. And um, yeah, guys, if you liked it, please like the video, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, share, whatever. Um, and I'll see you later. Plenty more to come. Good luck now. Bye.